Welcome to Green Economy TV. I'm your host, Byron McDonald. At Green Economy TV, we aspire to advance the green economy community by creating powerful, responsive, and measurable platforms that deliver unparalleled access to buyers and sellers of green economy-related goods and services, and content that provides insights and intelligence on all sustainable matters. But today, we have two phenomenal guests with us, Gordon Brown, publisher of Green Economy Media and Kenya, head of responsible business at Old Mutual. So before I go any further, let me just invite both of my guests onto the show. Hi, guys. Hi, Byron. Hi, Gordon. Hi, Byron. Hi, Kenya. Lovely to have you. How are you guys doing? How, how have you guys been? Uh, I'll let Gordon go first. <laughs> I've been very well, thanks, Byron. Uh, yeah, just come off a nice uh, weekend of uh, cycling around the Cape Peninsula and mm. uh, kicking back on the on the couch and uh, watching a bit of sport on TV. So I'm feeling relaxed and ready for the week ahead. Thank you. Nice, nice. So we're going into a topic today that's um, dear to you guys' heart. So that is ESG. That's the topic we're just going to discuss because this is what interests me. And Gordon, you are the pro. Kanye, you are the pro. So May, you guys are going to feature mainly on this topic today. So all the questions you have, you can go ahead and pose it. We're just going to go straight off the, out of the blocks and shoot for it. Yeah, no, great. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Byron. And, uh, and Kanye, just to, just to echo the sentiment, it's so great to have you on the show. And, uh, and, and yeah, it's really amazing stuff that uh, you guys are doing at Old Mutual as far as uh, investing in the, in the right places is concerned. Um, Perhaps you can uh, just uh, explain to me, explain to the viewers a little, give us a bit of feedback or rather context in terms of investing in environment, social and governance. What does it mean and uh, how does it actually happen? Hmm. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thanks also, Byron. I think what you guys are doing with this medium is to really contribute in a very important engagement around how as organizations as a society we need to be mindful of how we behave today and therefore esg matters the environmental social and governance principle they simply talk to how do we as organizations focus on ensuring that the manner in which we build our businesses is at the back of positive impact into the society on three main things. The environment is very key because today you cannot afford not to be conscious of our impact on the environment, both as a business, as individuals and as a society. The social issues are quite key, especially in the markets where we operate in the continent and also in South Africa. Because of the societal challenges that are faced by the people who work for us, people who are our customers, and also the broader society, the social issues are very important. And I think what's even much more key, especially where we find ourselves as South Africa today, at the back of COVID-19, with all the corruption issues that we are hearing about, it's about governance. How do we conduct ourselves? How do we stay above board? and how do we measure our impact, but how do we keep checking on each other in terms of how we contribute and participate as a business. So basically ESG principles is bringing the voice, the heart and consciousness into business that beyond being profitable, how are you building those profits? Mm. Yeah, no, that's, that's so interesting. And, and uh, you know, it's it's so important from a point of view of bringing about change so so mm -hmm. we all know that we're facing you know a series of crises uh, yeah. everything from climate change to the plastic in the environment and and uh, uh, crises relating to biodiversity and so on and so forth not only in the environmental space but also social crises and, and of course we certainly uh, uh, understand that in this country Mm. Um, using investment as a tool to incentivize companies, as you say, to think beyond profits mm. is a very logical uh, 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 mechanism and a, and a laudable one and one that's certainly very welcome. In, in your experience, do you find that 
especially listed companies, of course, that are actively seeking to attract investment. Do you find that these companies strive to improve their ESG ratings, strive in the things that they do from one year to the next to improve in areas where perhaps they, they have challenges? Uh, mm. Do you think that they're actively targeting uh, this particular investment or source of investment? You know, um, got in, in our experience and um, really proud to say Old Mutual is one of the pioneers in terms of aspiring to meet and apply ESG principles in where we choose to invest on behalf of our customers and together with our clients and our partners. But I think when we have to focus as an example to the particular topic and the sector um, around the construction industry and the property sector, this is where the greatest opportunity lies, where it's about how we create those opportunities to ensure that, yes, there is a high competitive edge, but there's also relevance in how we contribute, firstly, in making business, but secondly, in creating jobs, as an example, especially in the construction sector, the financial sector also similarly, and other sectors as well. And we are finding that once this is still at an early stages, but there is progress, there is an effort that's being made because of the noise that's coming out. Our consumers today are dictating to us that they are going to vote on the basis of which companies are seen to be contributing positively in the social issues that we are talking about. But also it's about just beyond ticking the box, beyond just regulation. How do you want to make sure that long after we cease to exist as organizations, we live a better society? We live thriving businesses. Mm -hmm. And we do see that the effort are being made, but there's still a huge gap in actually being where we need them to be. And the, back, and the gap simply says there's an opportunity because mm -hmm. at the back of what you are not doing today, there lies an opportunity of what you can do better going forward. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think that's quite important, though. I think that's quite important because that's the long-term thinking as something we need to change in this country a lot, especially because I think it's not ingrained in the country that long-term thinking. It's let me get what I can have now and not thinking about the foreseeable future. So that's why people don't gather enough wealth because they don't have that mindset. So as soon as you get people out of poverty and get them thinking like that, that I can leave for generations behind, not just for myself. Very, very important. I, I actually love what you said there. Sorry, Gordon, you were going in? Yeah, no, thanks, Byron. Um, and yeah, no, I know, I, I, and I concur with that with that sentiment. Uh, so just um, just going back to ESG structurally, how does it how it sort of functions, if you like? Um, I mean, is it correct to say that ESG, that is to say, uh, uh, firstly, it's it's a it's a rating, it's a score, it's a metric, right? And mm -hmm. and it's uh, and it's a metric that companies achieve under the heading of how they're performing uh, under the heading of environment, social, and governance. Yeah. Um, so, so just a question to, to understand. It's not really about the nature of your business. It's more about how you run your company, right? So, for example, and this is something I'd like you to just uh, explain to your viewers as well. For example, let's say uh, company A is a renewable energy company. So that's their business, right? It's mm. inherently green and it's, and it's inherently something that you want to promote. Mm. Um, so is that is that an ESG company or can an ESG company be even a company involved in something that we don't typically associate with being environmentally orientated, like let's say mining, for example, which is as an extraction industry, uh, we know that it's inherently impactful on the environment. And we know in this country, we don't always have a great social uh, or, or the industry doesn't always have a great history of social uh, mm. uh, success, perhaps in the mining industry. But uh, does it matter really what industry industry you're in or is it really about how you you run the business? Mm. You know, but it's actually both. It's about at the company level, but also at the sector level. As an example, ESG is about the environment. So there are those organizations, there are those sectors that are specifically 
have an opportunity in terms of how the nature of their business, the mining is an example, even construction, uh, even property, because we occupy buildings that contribute in either negating or having a positive impact on the environment. Carbon emission, not every company can be measured in terms of carbon emission, but also it's about how at the broader ESG principle, we all need to do what we're needing to do. Then remember there's a bigger issue, which is the social part of being an ESG. Again, that cuts across every sector because every organization has an impact on whatever society where we operate in. Similarly, governance also cuts across every sector. But in terms of how we are measured, how we are scored, banks will be measured against how other banks are participating or contributing towards ESG. Other sectors would be similar as well. We are hoping that regulation will drive going forward how across sector, it's not just limited to only financial services. Because if truth be told, all of us, every sector, every industry has an impact on the environment because of the nature of the things that we do on a daily basis. We all drink water, we all drive cars, we all mm. eat food. So issues around food security, talk to environmental sectors, how is that food made? At an individual level, how do I procure and which products do I choose to buy with an understanding, firstly, where that product comes from and what impact does it have on an environment? Again, this is broad because if you only think it's sector-based, it's easy to say mining because of the nature of the business that the mines get involved in, because it's about how the erosion of and how the increase of the emissions are based on the types of machines and the systems that are done there. But me, as I'm working in the financial services on a daily basis, I don't even think about where do I put the food or the waste that I'm using. And that waste is going to end up somewhere where there will be carbon emission as a result of my own behavior. So it really comes across. And so it's about how we, all of us, Gordon, we have to be mindful of our individual behavior first, and then the broader uh, society and the company's mandate that some of us have to carry. Yes, indeed, indeed. And, uh, you know, I was looking at the at the uh, the index, uh, the, the South African index of, of companies and how they rated uh, for ESG. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if you could perhaps, uh, 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 I'm not sure if you're well positioned to maybe just give us a, a bit of an overview of that index and and perhaps explain to what extent uh, a company's position in the index might affect the decision as to whether or not uh, they would be a good investment destination for your fund managers under this under this heading. Uh, perhaps just give me a sense of whether that's a, that's something you're comfortable discussing. Yes, you know we all aspire to be seen in a positive light for starters, mm. and because we are in business. It is a responsible thing, by the way, to conduct your business for profitability. Mm. So ESG is driving us in saying how we build our profits in a responsible manner. So when you look in terms of how companies are rated on the basis of the indices, it is important that we all strive to get the best rating. But again, the biggest issue is being mindful of the fact that it's not just about that rating. We do have a sense, especially in South Africa, that many companies are striving to have a better rating as far as the indices are concerned. But again, that's sector based. What we are hoping will happen going forward is how when we look at those indices, they actually talk to how we are changing the landscape, how we are shifting the time. So that whilst my report as an organization may be good and positive, my score might be high, high, if I look at where I am operating, is there change at the end of the day? Mm. Are we behaving much more better? Are our customers better positioned to be better financially because they have a financial services company that has looked after their interest? Is my service that I receive from whatever sector that I'm procuring the service from creating a better space for me that long term, when I gain that capital, which was invested on my behalf, 
was it invested in the right space so that mm. I can mm. derive the benefits that I am hoping that I will have. And therefore, those indices are a great indicator, a great driver of changing the behavior, but for the right reasons, not just to be self-serving. Yes, thank you. And you're touching on this on this great point. I wanted to perhaps sort of uh, finish on that, but let's touch on it now because you because you've raised it. Um, mm. I mean, so let's say I, you know, uh, let's I'm I'm a, I have uh, an old mutual uh, 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 policy for my retirement, for argument's sake. Mm -hmm. um, the most important thing that uh, I need to know is that when I retire, I'm going to get the type of returns that I'm expecting, I want to be able to beat inflation, I want to be able to live my life in retirement without worrying about money. Um, yes, of course, I would like that to happen through the, uh, investments that advance the environment that are good for the future, good for people. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm also, as your customer, I'm expecting a return on my investment. So. Yeah. Uh, so, so perhaps just talk to us about that. How do you make these investment decisions? Of course, can we assume that you don't have the luxury because of your customer mandate to invest in strong ESG businesses that are not also succeeding financially? You know, our role as a business is firstly to be the custodian and be the conscience of where we need to be investing on behalf of our customers and together with our partners, because bulk of the money and the capital that we are investing is together with our partners. We don't own all the money. It would be nice that it all belongs to us, but now it belongs to our partners as well. So how we make those decisions, as all mutual, we have embarked on the principle that we will proactively and make every effort to ensure that we invest in ESG principles. And you are right, what I'm saying, some of our clients and some of our investors, it's all about bottom line. How much am I going to get out of this at whatever period of time? Guess what? COVID-19 has taught us a very critical lesson. Mm. And today, it doesn't matter how much money you have put aside. We had an opportunity to actually do better before COVID-19. And in many instances, we did not. So when you mm. look at how the economic downturn has turned in a way that is negatively impacting those investments that people have worked hard for to actually put aside, hoping that 2020, I'll have so much capital. I'm going to take my children to the best schools. We're going to go to the best holiday. I'm going to buy the biggest car that I want. There's no opportunity because those cars are no longer manufactured. Some of mm. those businesses have closed down. Some of the schools are not actually operational. The physical infrastructure has actually changed. So it's very important that as an organization, such as ours, Old Mutual, we begin to educate our clients and our potential investors in a different manner. You mentioned the issues around your pension and as, as an example, one of my personal worrying uh, issues is, do our people even understand where their money that they are putting behind the pension, where is it is saved? As an example, you could be putting your money in a pension that's investing in harmful elements of the environment because it's all about bottom line. So it is very critical that potential investors and those who have their pension today, but then you must ask the question, you must start challenging your fund managers. You must start choosing on the basis of the transparency of the yeah. company that you are investing in. They must tell you where your money is going. Because mm. if you do not know, guess what? You're also contributing to can be harming the environment without even you knowing. So sometimes, especially today, it's inexcusable not to know because mm. the information yeah. is right out there and it has been brought to us by COVID-19. I love you know, that this point. raising uh, raising COVID nineteen is is so relevant and pertinent to this conversation because mm -hmm. really what ESG and correct me if I'm wrong here but what one of the key objectives of having this focus on ESG is actually to limit the risk of, to investors 
uh, of investing in companies. So, isn't it, it? It would be true to say, for example, that if you invest, uh, invest, for example, in coal, right now, now, now there are plenty of excellent coal companies, uh, coal miners uh, uh, functioning right now. But there's also this language that's being used that, you know, that there's no long-term future for coal. Mm. Now, that's a, that's a theory. Yeah, that's that's a debate we can have. But let's say, for example, that. Uh, what is the risk of taking a long-term investment in in a business where the the end of that business is being projected or predicted uh, versus investing in a business that has you know a, a, a super bright future, for example, or investing in a business where the governance is not sound, or investing in a business that might be uh, you know harming the environment? What are the risks of that in, that company facing catastrophic mm -hmm. legislation? What is the risk of investing in a company that's not looking after the societies in which it's involved in? Could there be social unrest? Could there be another, uh, you know, Americana uh, scenario? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so in a way, social ESG is also, it's about caution. It's about limiting risk for investors by ensuring that, you know, customer money and partner money is being invested in uh, businesses and sectors with the lowest possible risk. Is that a factor? You know, especially I think when you bring this to the built environment sector, that is just so, so key. How many construction organizations and property companies have folded because of not really investing in ESG principles or the behavior? There's many examples that uh, you and I can quote, Gordon. So it is a major factor how, as a sector, how, as an organization, we have to make sure that we take into consideration the ESG principles. Remember, the matter of sustainability is no longer just PR exercise. It is a matter of life and death. People have died because construction companies did not behave well. People have lost jobs because of the corruption that we've seen in the construction industry. 2010 is the case in point. You can read about that every day, how, how big companies behaved in the manner that they did and how many people have lost their, life, their, their jobs and, yes, their lives as well. So it is a major factor in terms of the strategic decisions that are taken by organizations. They need to take into consideration the impact on the environment, the impact on the society and the manner in which we behave. The major issue, particularly in South Africa, we know our high levels of unemployment. And it takes one decision by the CEO or CIO or somebody not doing something right at the top to impact many lives negatively. Many young people are highly qualified today. They can't get jobs. We can't get engineers. Sorry, we have to. <laughs> I forgot to say this. I was on a roll. No problem, no problem, and no you're problem. so right. And of course, these things and these things ultimately, you know, affect the share price, and, yes. and that affects uh, that affects your investors, and that in turn affects, you know, your policyholders. So you know, exactly. everybody, you know, investments. This is something that people don't always understand: is that you know, when companies lose money, it's not some nameless, faceless, uh, 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 you know, person dressed in a tuxedo that's losing money. Everyone's losing money. Because mm -hmm. the minute you have an institutional investment, you're investing on behalf of workers, you're investing on behalf of, 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 of people that are counting on that money for, for, their, for their retirement and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so negative uh, mistakes that companies make where, where, where shareholder value is wiped out, you know, affects everybody in, in, uh, in the economy and in society. And so it's so important that investors you know are able to to make the right decisions and these types of indices and these types of indicators and metrics uh, they help the investors to make the right decisions but of course at the end of the day it's it's quite a complicated and quite a complex uh, set of choices and and decisions and um, often these things are hedged so if you invest in that then you invest mm -hmm. in this in return so that you hedge the risk and so forth and I guess that's why you know at the end of the day one has to you know, one has to trust the the institutional investors to to make these decisions, and I guess that's why it's great to have these sort of indices and these labels uh, to help uh, uh, people to understand 
how companies are investing and what's important mm -hmm. to them. Um, just in closing, and, and perhaps you can give us some, uh, I don't know if there are some, perhaps some nice success stories or, in, or companies that you might have, that your funds have invested in that have not only done well from an environmental or social or governance perspective, but have also done well as a share. I mean, are there some, are there some ideas there or some insights that you could share with us? You know, as, as old Mitchell, there are key, there are four key investments that we focus on. Firstly, it's in the education space where we've got a school fund. Uh, we've invested over 1.4 billion of uh, schools investment to build the infrastructure, which has actually seen the sector doing much more better in terms of the number of learners who are part and parcel of the mainstream schooling. We've also seen huge investment from our own space into the renewable energy, where actually government can have an opportunity to provide power to over 800,000 800, um, residents without having to draw from the national grid. Also, part of our investment into the ESG indices, Old Mutual has put over 30 billion worth of investment. So that cuts across in the construction sector, particularly in property. We're one of the biggest investors in large properties, like in the malls, as an example. And we're making sure that the companies that we work with, particularly those who are listed, they follow the ESG principles. And we're beginning to see some positive headways in terms of how those organizations are honoring the ESG principles. And for us as Old Mutual to be able to speak on behalf of our clients where we are actually utilizing or putting their money on their behalf. So that yes. cuts across where we feel as an organization, as one of the biggest investors, we're creating that space, especially when it comes to issues of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Transformational infrastructure is going to be key in how we change the landscape. And that's why the discussion around the green building, as an example, around the behavior of a property sector, because this could be one of those sectors that actually builds the economy again. Lovely. No, brilliant. And look, it's been wonderful speaking with you. And uh, certainly, I've learned a lot from uh, from this conversation. Just uh, if just in closing, uh, I mean, if I was a CEO of a major property fund or a major listed company, uh, and I'm looking for investment, I'm looking to grow my share, I'm looking to attract investors. Hey, what would you? What would your message be to me in terms of what I can do to to attract investment under this heading for my business? Mm. You know, um, Colin, if you don't mind, I'm going to base my response on my personal story as a, a long distance runner and as a, as a mountaineer. I just know how daunting a task is for CEOs or CIOs to tackle the issue of ESG principles as part of their strategy. But, you know, for one to summit the highest mountain, as an example, in Europe, where I had an opportunity to summit Mount Elbrus, or to complete 90 kilometers of running like in the Congress Marathon, it starts with that first step. So my advice would be start with the first step first, that even though it might not seem like it would make sense today, because the decision is about making money today to satisfy the needs of the investor or the client, long term, how do you summit that mountain? by understanding what are those critical steps that you have to take as a leader. Mm -hmm. Some mountain running a long distance run is about personal leadership, how you bring yourself first. So my message to our CEOs and those chief investment officers is where at the end of the day, do you want to see your role having played a part in advancing our society, in advancing our businesses and doing the right thing so that we don't erode anymore from the future, particularly the future of our children. It's about a leadership and how do we as leaders take the mandate on behalf of our organization in a responsible manner because we are the custodians of the future, especially on behalf of those generations that will be there when we have long left. Be responsible in those decisions. 
Lovely. Well, Kanye, what a pleasure. Thank you for that uh, concluding comment from your side. Enough from me. Byron, back to you in the studio. Guys, I've learned so much during this session, and I was so in line with what Kanye said, but we've come to the end of the show, and thank you so much for being on the platform, Kanye. So much for sharing this, what you've shared with our community on the sustainable side, because this is what we want to put out. We want to share on the sustainable side and show that you can build a sustainable future. But guys, I would close the show, and I want to thank both of you just for being on today and teaching me a little bit more. <laughs> Thank you. What a Thank pleasure. You. Bye bye, Kanya. Bye bye, Byron. See you guys. Bye bye. So we've reached the end of the show and I've learned so much today about ESG, sustainability, and this is what we want to put out. Like we say, we want to educate you on sustainability, how you can better the future. It's all about long-term investment, as Kanye said. She is so in line, so inspirational as a long-distance runner on top of that or so. So we don't want to just invest in your future now. And yes, you can be a business owner. You can be a man at the bottom. We're speaking to both of you because it's about socializing. It's about working together. COVID has taught us, taught us so many things, as Kanye said, that money is important to build the future. It's a tool to have, but you have to invest in the human being. You have to invest in life building forward because the human being is the economy at the end of the day. That building just stands there, but that is the economy. That's why ESG is so important. So guys, go out and invest. As I say, I'm Byron McDonald. This is greeneconomy.tv. We'd love you to log on next week. Like I'll say each week, goodbye. Build a sustainable future. Love you. In Africa, when the heavy rains fall, some people build dams, some build bridges, and some build ships. It's an observation that speaks to the essential nature of people and how they respond to a crisis. Some are cautious, simply looking to conserve what they have. Some expand their horizons, and some make the most of every opportunity. At Old Mutual Investment Group, we see the power of responsible investment and seek to allocate our clients' capital in such a way that they will meet their investment objectives and make a positive impact on society. It's about using investing as a force for good, about imagining a better world, and harnessing money to help make it happen. Investment with purpose today for meaningful returns tomorrow. Old Mutual Investment Group. Investing for a future that matters. Old Mutual Investment Group is a licensed financial services provider.